from Black Women TV. Hello, guys. How are you? Good. How are you, Wilson? Good. Good. So, when did this come about for you, Andy? As far as it's been years since you know you've been involved, but you know this is coming back, and you want us to do it for your country. You know, uh, how excited was it for you to be a part of this, and was it ever challenging at any given point? It was. It's still challenging. <laughs> it, it, I was. It, I was born into the challenge, and I think that I will exit this hemisphere and this world from the challenge. Um, I think that's what uh, let us know uh, to bring a camera with us was that we knew that we that we we were uh, we we were going into a challenge and we wanted to capture what that was going to be. <laughs> um, um, does that make sense? <laughs> you know, and VP, obviously, you know, the challenge, obviously, of putting this together and seeing, you know, it come to fruition. You know, it's never easy. Obviously, we all know theater is never easy. You know, how long did it take before you said to yourself, before we saw the finished product, that they got it? Uh, up until uh, we met Doug and Christine. Uh, when, when Doug came along, um, you know, Doug, Doug is a, he's a producer, he's an incredible documentary filmmaker and, and he came along and, um, kind of, uh, I, I feel like Doug trusted it more, um, than, you know, than, uh, than, than almost than I did. <laughs> and, uh, and he came in and, and I saw a cut and I cried. I remember calling Andy and I was like, dude, this is, this is it. And, um, and it, you know, for me, like, as long as I just, I, I, what, what's important to me is like, we stay honest and authentic. And I feel like that's like the whole, you know, the Jonathan Larson and, and what Mark, you know, when you look at Mark's uh, film within Rent, you know, you really, you, you just see a guy filming and it's more about the characters than it is about the lighting or the shot or, you know, all the, all, all the, the magic. It's, it's about the moment. And so, you know, uh, when, when I saw that cut, I, I was, I was just, I was in tears and, and I called Andy and was like, this, this is it, dude, this is so good. You know, you know when you do a documentary, you, there's never an end game. Like you just don't know how long it's going to go. You know, unlike film where, you know, this is about a shoot and it's going to get costly because you have to finish a certain amount of days. Doc, you just don't know, especially when you have to throw in uh, the footage and the editing, you know, and then getting it together. You know, uh, at what point, you know, especially for you, Andy, like this is your life, you know, it's like, <laughs> did, did you take a break at any given point? Um, <laughs> no, because I think a lot of the documentary happens inside your head. And and it's it's like I'm, I'm actually I'm looking forward to taking the break when it gets released, when like, you know, once. I think once the interviews are over and once it's just playing out in the world, I think that's when I'll actually be able to take the break. Because otherwise I was just thinking um, not only creatively, like how, how about this story point and this and that, how are we going to get money? What about this? How about the key art? It's, it's, it's never, it, it's, it's just never ending. So I'm, you know, this is, this has been occupying the, the, the space in my head for the past seven years that now when, once it's released, I'm gonna. It's gonna be the strangest sensation to just not have to think about it anymore. That it's just done. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I don't know what I'm. What I'm gonna do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and for you, VP, you know the editing sequence. Obviously, when there's a lot of footage, you know, and you know you have to bring it down a bit. You know how hard is it being in an editor room saying like, we gotta add this in, but we gotta take it out. And then obviously, I'm assuming somebody's giving you notes and saying it's not flowing right, or we need to take this out, it's too long, you know, and so forth. Yeah, well, I, I think it's not, I, I you know, I, I really agree with Andy. It's like, it's in your head. And it's it's not so much of like, we need to put this in, we need to take this out. You know, I feel like, um, you know, someone who, who you know, uh, essentially captured, you know, um, most of the documentary, um, I, I really, um, you know, it, it's not so much about what I think it is. It's what people who are like the editors and the producers who are going through the footage and analyzing it. And like, it, it's almost like you have to wait till they catch up, you know, cause it, you, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged to be, you know, at the forefront. 
and I have my opinions, but it's, it's, it's until everyone else is on the same page that it really, um, you know, and then, it, and, and then that validation is like, yes, okay. We, we agree. And then uh, there is a lot of doubt in me is like, is it, is, should we put this in? Should we put this in? Should we put this in? And I think, you know, staying true to the original story, which was following Andy and, and his, you know, as a director and, and a Cuban American and uh, a Jedi is what, <laughs> is, is what I'm, I'm uh, uh, calling it. And um, I think uh, until that comes up and everyone gets on the same page, like that's, until that moment happens, you're 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 kind of, you know, uh, uh, in limbo, so to speak. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like this is the year of musicals. You know, in that um, last year, you know, because we're all home, you know, we got to see uh, theaters was closed all over the world, and we got to see uh, plays. You know, ad- adapted for film. You know, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and The Father. And this year, you know, just this week, obviously, we we've got In the Heights you know, coming up, you know, you've got uh, West Side Story coming up, you know, so like definitely the Latino flavors coming in all in there, you know, so like, uh, it, it, it's interesting. So like, when you think about it, it's bringing people back to theater, you know, to see the joy of it. And it's just not Broadway, but this theater in general. And to see Rent, you know, obviously in a different language and the way the songs are sung, I have to admit, I'm not a Rent head, but I'm close to it. You know, so like I actually happened to go uh, to the last performance of the original production. You know, I was there actually, small story. I was at the Toronto Film Festival. A friend of mine did not know I was there. And he says, what are you doing tonight? And I go, I'm just hanging. He doesn't know I'm in Toronto. He goes, well, I got an extra ticket for the final performance. Do you want to come? He goes, what time is it? He was like, you know, six, eight. He called me early in the morning. And I went straight to the airport, <laughs> straight to the airport, got a flight to New York, landed in like with maybe two hours to spare. I think I'm a guy, just hit the shower, put on a suit. And then like, you know, you got to get all the dressed up and all that. I took a cab down there, you know? So that was, uh, that was my story. And, and actually one of the few posters that I have in my house uh, is the poster of the film version, you know, and it's signed by some of the cast who were in the original production. I love know? it. That's so <laughs> cool. And you and I were in the same room on that final performance. You know, so like, yeah. So, so it's always a good feeling. So when I see this and I go, okay. And then I'm hearing the songs uh, in a Spanish language, you know, that's thrilling to see because, you know, there's a lot of shows, obviously, as we know, that like gets performed all over the world. Yeah, but yeah. if you've never seen that production, you always wondered how, if it's going to be sung the same way and the challenge of creating the lyrics so that it sounds the same way, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you, Andy, obviously to experience that and then teach these kids how to perform it, you know, obviously until people see it, talk to me about that experience. (laughs) Uh, You know, it's, it's, remember that they hadn't done a musical and well, most, none of them had ever done a musical before. Uh, neither had they seen a musical because they weren't doing musicals. So I had to teach them uh, the art form first and how and, and what is, how do you sing and act at the same time? And, and, and in Rent fashion, we had singers had, that have never, never acted and actors who had never sung. So uh-huh. it was a matter of, of, of teaching them, okay, this is, this is what a musical is. Um, uh, so it was like musical theater 101. Then I was like, okay, you got that? All right. Now we got to embody these characters uh, of, of uh, you know, New York artists uh, in, in, in 1990. And uh, that, that was, you know, what was tough about that? Raising the stakes in such a, uh, uh, you know, they're on island time and they're, you know, Caribbean and, you know, have a certain temperament and laid back. And it, so that, that was changing challenging to, to get them to embody the immediacy um, of, of, of the characters. Mm-hmm. And for you, BB, you know, like, what's your takeaway from this experience that for you, that you learned throughout this time uh, as a director, you know, when you put this all together and you see the emotional aspect of it, you know, how does that influence you as a director? 
Well, you know, it, it's funny you say that because, uh, you know, uh, I to, to follow Andy directing uh, is, is what really influenced me a lot. You know, I, I would, you know, I, it, you know, I, I was not only rolling camera, but I was also taking notes, <laughs> you know, and so I think a lot of that has has translated into, you know, this film and and, um, you know, I just it's um i don't even know i don't even know how to explain it uh you know with with this particular project because you know every day you know something new and and you know seeing andy do his thing and and sometimes being kicked out of andy doing his thing you know was also uh part of it you know it's like no and eh, this part we ain't gonna film you know yeah like so. we we're doing it to a friend i was like out out. no no camera no <laughs> so you know, uh, but but uh, I think uh, following Andy and filming Andy and, and watching this this process and, and filming and documenting the process has has definitely influenced me as a director in so many ways. And, um, you know, I, I feel like this is an evolution of of an artist more so than a practice of my craft, you know, and I, I think that's a, a huge uh, flex on on this particular project. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you. It's, I'm, like all of a sudden my door is knocking like you know when they want to deliver packages you don't want them to walk away <laughs> yeah 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 like really a lot of time i've been a long day and now it's like okay hopefully he doesn't get on the elevator and so forth um but just so uh, uh um and so at the end of the day you know what about you andy where do you go from this once people see this what's the next step you know yeah the next Actually, step before you before you answer that give me 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> bueno. <laughs> Voy a ir a comer queso. <laughs> Are you back in West Palm? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's all right, that guys. You left it at the door. <laughs> it's like you, it's like all of a sudden, really? <laughs> now you start coming to the house? <laughs> but yeah, so then, um, so basically, at the end of the day, obviously, you know, um what you know for the people that performed it you know uh what's those people what are their aspects after the world when you bring this to cuba you know what is happening there now you know uh, are people now going to get more arts are there going to be more performances done after what you put together um you know i was hoping that the project itself would be able to uh build momentum to continue doing theater and uh with the, uh, the change of, of the administration at that time, everything fell fell apart. Um, you know, the all, all all the all the work we had did was what we had done it just went on pause, and so now um, with uh, with the new administration, we're hoping that there'll be an ease of policy that'll be able to let us go back in and. Um, continuing develop theater there. Uh, I, it, I'm not that I'm not as much interested in bringing a musical there as far uh, an American musical as as much as developing one uh, where the where where we're, we're, we're telling our own Cuban stories and, and musicalizing them and creating our own work. Um, and um, that's what that excites me that because uh -huh. um, there's there's stories to tell there and there's music that's beautiful. Um, and I, I'm, I'm hoping that the, doc, that the documentary gives us the momentum and, and does everything that we want it to do so that, I, so that we, can, we can do that powerfully over there. When did you complete it? And even though it hasn't been shown yet, have you seen any change as to maybe things happening? Uh, so one more time, I'm sorry. When did you complete the project, even though it hasn't been shown yet? You know, after you completed it, you know, like, is there anybody that you talk to as far as the next evolution of, you know, arts? You know, oh, yeah, yeah. We're, I'm in conversation with the Ministry of Culture currently about uh, what the the next project that I'm doing there. OK. And for you, VP, what's next for you? Uh, what's next for me is I'm, I'm, I'm working on a, uh, a, a personal project on education, on American education. Um, and uh, kind of showing how many, like how many different ways we can educate our youth uh, here in the United States. And uh, really excited about it. I've, I've been in pre-pro for about a year now and 
about uh, about to kick it into production starting uh, <laughs> August. I'm really excited. You know, before I let you guys go, it was like I'm just curious, Andy. Uh, what song is is translated best from Rent? Um, I think Seasons of Love. It's 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 a it's a really it doesn't skip a beat and it um me then amor measure in love it's just like it uh, tiempos de amor it's it's a times of love uh, it's 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 a really beautiful translation and yeah. and and it captures it captures everything that Jonathan uh, was writing it's great. I actually saw Lynn Manuel Miranda the other day. I was actually at the premiere for In the Heights, and we talked about Tick Tick Boom. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. which is interesting. And obviously, the following day, they just released a uh, teaser for that. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. so like, you know, Jonathan will always be remembered. At the end of the day, you know, it's 25 years later, you know, and he's still being talked about. And that's the legacy of what Rent did and what you were able to bring to another country, um, you know, for the first time. Mm -hmm. and what you guys put together you and vp and i appreciate you guys talking to me and we'll get this out and hopefully it gets a, a bigger audience so that way everything can change and the arts are you know are talked about more in cuba absolutely thank you wilson yeah. that, that, that's everything that we want so appreciate it started. we can only do it all together really <laughs> yeah take synergy all right <laughs> thank take you care,